So when I was in graduate school, there were only a handful of transcription factors for all organisms that were known. I studied one of those for my graduate work. This was more than 35 years ago now. By studying this protein, I and many other laboratories studying the same thing were figuring out the mechanism of how these proteins and how cells and viruses use these proteins to control their functions. The Human Genome Project generated uh, information for the entire genetic makeup of a human being. We know where all the genes are in, uh, because of the Human Genome Project uh, in that genome, and they code for about 23,000 different proteins. What, we, what has changed since then because of the ENCODE project, new technologies that have been developed in, in those laboratories as well as many others, and the efforts of really thousands of scientists around the world, is that we can now measure not just one site in the genome, one place where a transcription factor will bind and control transcription, but all of the sites in the genome. ENCODE stands for the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements. It's rather like a catalog of the regions of the human genome that control the function of genes under certain conditions. As an analogy, think of a passage from a favorite book. Imagine the text is missing punctuation, spacing, and those visual cues that make sense of the language. All you have are the individual letters that make up the words. If we add in parts of our language beyond just the letters, we can provide meaning to the string of text capital letters and periods that flag the breaks between sentences, commas that highlight a pause in thought or set off a list of items, quotation marks to link speaker and speech. From a string of seeming nonsense, great literature appears. In a similar way, the ENCODE project is helping scientists make sense of the human genome by understanding the great biological language contained in the chemical letters of our DNA. The Human Genome contains 3.2 billion letters. The Human Genome Project determined the location of more than 20,000 genes, specific instructions that tell the cell how to make proteins such as hemoglobin or insulin. However, areas of the genome we can recognize as genes only take up a small part of the physical genome, leaving the functional significance of much of the genome a mystery. The ENCODE project is the genetic equivalent of providing spacing and punctuation, a set of experiments that determine which pieces of DNA regulate the action and storyline of the genome. For example, identifying regions where proteins called transcription factors bind the DNA to control gene activity. Other experiments searched for DNA methylation, small molecules that attach to the DNA sequence subtly changing the shape of the molecule and conveying additional information to the cell's machinery. Transcription factor binding or DNA methylation might greatly increase or completely silence the activity of a corresponding gene, dramatically altering the level of protein it produces. This may have important consequences for how the cell functions or interacts with neighboring cells. All told, 1,649 experiments were performed from these, scientists identified the location of millions of functional elements in our genome. Since these data are publicly available to anyone, scientists in all fields can use this information to produce an integrated picture of our genome. The ENCODE project seeks to better understand the way our genome is organized and regulated, providing insight into human health and disease. This process of whether a gene gets made into RNA, which then subsequently becomes protein, um, is called gene regulation or control of gene regulation. So the reason this is important, for instance, is that you have the same genes in all of the cells in a human's body, yet a liver cell and a neuron are completely different cells. A uh, liver cell does all the things that livers do, and a neuron uh, transmits information and electrical signals they do this by expressing different genes in the two different cell types. We have about 23,000 genes coding for 23,000 proteins, and each cell type usually expresses about half of those genes in particular combinations, and that's what helps them become the type of cell that they're going to be and perform the functions that they're going to perform.